I'm Steve for This Up With Cars, and today I'm back with my Datsun 280Z. You haven't seen this car for a while, but that doesn't mean that work hasn't been happening to it. This car has come a long ways from when Junkyard Diggs found it, found out that it was fuel injected, and gave up on it. My plan is to rally cross this car, and it's almost ready, but first I need to fix the brakes. But before we get to that, let's take a look at some of the changes that have happened since you last seen it. Starting on the front of the car, obviously the headlights have covers on them now, and a big item is the bumper has been removed from the front. Just removing the bumpers from the car has made a huge change. Take a look at the difference between what it looked like before and what it looks like now. It completely changes the shape of the car. Just removing the bumper from a 280Z does leave this big hole in the front. So I am toying around with the idea of fitting a 240Z bumper across the front here. Headlight covers like this are illegal here in the US because you will get condensation on the inside which will prevent the lighting from working as well as it should. But that's okay because primarily this is going to be used as a race car and I likely will be trailering it any place that I take it. Working our way back down the sides. The inner and outer rockers have been replaced, as well as most of the rear fenders. On the inside, the floors needed replaced as well, so they have been replaced on both sides. Since this is going to be a race car, I left most of the carpet out of this side, because this will just get dirty anyways. This car already had great looking seats, so I haven't had to do anything there. The carpet was left on the passenger side, but it's likely not to get as dirty as the driver's side is. Around the back, the rear bumper has also been removed, and the holes where the old bumper pistons came through the valence have been filled. I also found a set of these really neat Datsun mud flaps. These are actually used on a Datsun pickup, so brackets had to be adapted to fit it to the 280Z. The bracketry for the mud flaps had to be different on each side. This side, the fuel tank sits right behind this fender, so there's not as much room. On the other side, the exhaust sits right next to the mud flap, so the bracketry on each side has to be slightly different. Here on the passenger side, the fender's been fixed, as well as the inner and outer rockers, and of course the floors. I just wanted to show you underneath the car real quick because one nice thing to do on cars that are going to be race cars and you're going to be changing the wheels all the time is to weld a nice bar here. This is added to the original frame section here. That way this gives you a good sturdy jacking point pretty much the entire length of the floor pan that you can jack the car up at any of these spots to change your wheels. So I can stick it here in the center, jack this entire side up at once and replace both wheels and tires on this side of the car. As you can see, the floors came out pretty good. This car doesn't have any brakes at all. I've been moving it around without any brakes. So if I push the brake pedal, it doesn't feel like it's pushing on anything at all. It only feels like it's moving the return spring attached to the pedal. So I think the piston in the master cylinder is stuck in the in position. If I pull on the handbrake, it moves, but when you pull it, it doesn't actually stop the car. So let's get the master cylinder off, see if we can get that fixed. I don't have any extra parts for the master cylinder, and if we can't get that to work, let's at least get this parking brake to work. There are some parts that came with the car when I got it. We have a set of the hardware for the rear drum brakes. We got a full set of shoes, and then we have some front brake pads. And beyond that, I don't have any other parts for the brakes on this car. The master cylinder is located over here in this corner. They give you a handy little door that you can pop up to gain more access. So let's get this master cylinder off. Let's take a look at it, see if we can clean it up and reuse it. Okay, so this is a level sensor for the reservoirs. The wires are just wrapped around everything. One of the nice things about cars with power brakes is that the brake pedal is not attached to the master cylinder, so you can remove it pretty easily. There are two brake lines coming out of the bottom of the master cylinder, and then two bolts hold it to the brake booster. 
I want to remove the brake lines first because it's easier when the master cylinder is held securely in place. I'll be using a 10 millimeter line wrench so that I don't strip the nuts. Now that they are loosened with the line wrench, I'll grab a normal wrench to take them the rest of the way off. In this case, I'll be using my ratcheting open end wrench. The arrow on the wrench indicates which way the nut will turn. Now I can use a 12 millimeter wrench to get the master cylinder loose. Now let's see if we can break this loose. That was really rusted on there. There we go. Let's get it over to the parts washer. If we look up the end of the master cylinder, it's just as I suspected. The piston is pushed way down deep inside there and it's stuck. It's not returning so that the pedal can be pushed again to squirt fluid out down to the brakes. So I need to get the clip out of here so that I can clean things up and hopefully return this piston. If I can get the piston out, then I can clean up the bore, clean up the piston, and we might be able to save this. But if it's stuck in there forever, I'm going to have to get a new master cylinder. The clip is out. This washer stops the piston from falling out the back of the master cylinder. Now our cylinder in there is totally stuck. So I'm gonna to try to wash this out and get this nice and clean inside. Maybe use a little brush to clean that up. The bore inside there doesn't feel that bad, but I will need to try to get this piston to pop back up and out of there so I can get everything fully cleaned out. So to push the piston back out, I'm going to have to see if I can get access into here. Either take off these plugs or take off the reservoirs and see if I can see the back of the piston so that I can push it back out. Looks like taking off one of the plugs might be the easiest. I broke these bolts loose. Let's take a look inside here. So we have a little valve, a spring. Doesn't look like we're going to get much access to the cylinder through here. Look at how much crud was in there though. So if I can't save this, these need to come out, need to cleaned in here anyways. Now let's take the reservoirs off, see if we have any better access. I've loosened up the clamps. These reservoirs have been on here a long time. Oh, that's not so bad. Let's dried up brake fluid in there. Get this brake fluid out of the way. Unfortunately, under the reservoirs, we just have little holes here, so we don't have access to the piston there either. A lot of master cylinders have a bolt on this side, so you can take that off, slide something through, push your piston back. If the brakes had been working on this car, we could have put a clamp on the front disc caliper and pushed the brake pads out, which would have forced fluid back up through and pushed the cylinder back out. But since the brakes were not working on that car, we don't have that option. And at this point, we don't have the option of easily blocking all the holes to keep fluid from coming out. 
We could put a grease zerk on here so that we could inject it with grease, forcing the piston out. But again, that's not so easy in the case of this master cylinder. Just for fun, I'm gonna take this plug out, just double check that we don't have any access here. It is already looking like a small hole, but it might be at least better than the holes that we do have. What do we have in here? We have a little bit bigger hole. I don't really feel a prominent edge of anything there that I can grab on and try to move. If this was a real simple slave cylinder for a clutch or something, you could even use air to shoot the piston out. Be really careful if you're using air because the expansion of air will shoot this piston out very fast. That's why it's better to use a grease gun instead. The only other idea I have is to bang it against the board and see if it'll move that piston out. And it did. The piston came to the end. Let's see if it'll come out the rest of the way. So maybe if I can move this back and forth, it'll free up. I'll push the piston back in. Okay, the spring is moving. It's pumping now. It actually feels pretty free. I don't think I'm going to get it out of there, but the piston's moving freely now. So I can pump this over at the solvent tank, get it nice and cleaned out, and I think we can reuse it. So we're not out of luck yet. Everything is cleaned up, put back together, and ready to go on. To put this back together, I'm going to start the pipes on the bottom first before I secure this to the booster. That way I'll have a little bit of wiggle room to make sure that I get the nuts on the pipe started correctly and not cross-threaded. Now I can start putting in brake fluid. It will start making its way through the system. If there is a leak somewhere, maybe it might start leaking out of there. You can see a lot of bubbles in there as the master cylinder is filling up with brake fluid. Doesn't appear to be any leaks around the master cylinder, so at least I think this part is okay. This caliper, brake hose, the rotor, all of this looks pretty bad. So I'm going to loosen the brake bleeder. Let's take it completely out first. Make sure there's still a hole in it. It hasn't been sealed up. If I hold this up to my light, I can see light through the hole. So this is open. Now I'm not trying to bleed the brakes right now. I'm just trying to flush some fluid through them and make sure that, for example, the hose isn't clogged up or the caliper isn't clogged up. I just want to see some flow of fluid. So don't try this if you are planning on bleeding your brakes because this is not going to work to bleed your brakes. So the bleeder is open. I'm just going to pump the brake pedal, see if we get anything out here. Doesn't look like we got any fluid at all. These brake hoses aren't rock hard, but I definitely want to replace them. And there's a good chance that these calipers are completely frozen up. Right now, I don't have the parts to fix these things, so let's just put the wheel back on and take a look at the parking brake and see if we can at least get that working so that there are some brakes on this car for me moving it around. Let's get this rear drum off and see if we can fix the parking brake. Oh, 
The drums on these cars are aluminum, so be careful what you hit them with. I'm using a brass hammer. Okay, well, here's some of our problem. There's no pad left on these shoes, so we know we need to replace the shoes. Let's pull the parking brake and see if these even go out, see if this is even working or not. So as you can see, when you pull the parking brake, it moves the shoes outward and against the drum. So if we just put new shoes on here, we should have a working parking brake. First thing I'm going to remove is the retainers that hold the shoes on. It just takes a quarter turn to release those. I know that I have new hardware sitting in the back of the car, but there's nothing wrong with this old hardware, so I'm going to reuse it. Now let's pull the parking brake again, and make sure this works. Now I can put the drum on, and I should at least have some brakes. Now I can put the wheel back on, do the other side. That's going to be it for today. I have some parts that I need to order to finish off the brakes, but we are getting really close to being able to take this car to a rallycross. Click subscribe if you don't want to miss any more videos on this car and comment below with things that you might want to see me do with this 280Z.